it's a lovely day today and cherry trees are in blossom and tomorrow it's Easter, we have a long weekend, so I have a lot of time, well, a lot of time is a bit exaggerated, to work on Old Rusty. So guys, Old Rusty is back. I hope you enjoy it. Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. And by some mysterious means, I was able to get some parts for Old Rusty. Don't ask me how, but I got the parts. Also, the crankshaft came back and in this video, we go in to verify the crankshaft. We'll install it with new bearings. We'll connect the con rods to it and we might install the timing chain and then get everything nicely synchronized. And hopefully that will all work just fine. So this may take a little bit of time. I might have to do it in two videos. Now, throughout the video, I will be using the metric system because that's a bit easier for me. But of course, I will have the conversion on the screen for my American, uh, UK and Australian people that use the non-metric system. Although I'm not too sure about the Canadians, you might be using the metric system. Anyhow, um, let's take a closer look on the crankshaft. Here is the crankshaft. The machine shop had to take off 0.25 mil to get everything cleaned up. And they did a real good job, I have to say. The main journals are now 49.75 millimeters and they used to be 50. The Conrad journals, uh, they are now 47.75 millimeters and they used to be 48. So that means that my crankshaft is now undersized. The real question now is, do we trust the machine shop? And my answer is no and yes, but I will double check if that's true what they said. If you go into measure the journals, we are going to need a micrometer and this is a micrometer uh, between 25 and 50 millimeters. So the first thing we need to do now is to calibrate the meter and that's why you have these little blocks here. Now don't drop these. Uh, this little block, block right here is a calibration block. And as you can see, it's listed 25 mil. So we need to put it in between those two points, then adjust the Werner and then it should indicate exactly 25 mil. That's how you know that your micrometer is properly calibrated. So that's the first thing we will do right now. I just clamped the micrometer gently into a vise and I have some cloth to protect it. And the temperature is around 20 degrees centigrade and it can make a difference. So pay attention to that. Here is my calibration piece. It's 25 mil. I'm just going to stick it in between and then I'm going to turn until it is caught. And there we go. Yeah, so it's just one hundredths of a millimeter off, so that's good. I can adjust it, but I'm not going to bother about it. So I know that my tool is quite all right. So next, um, we go into adjust the micrometer to the size of the journals for the main bearing. And remember, I said it was 49.75. So let's place it into that position. So first, let me go to 50. Now this is 50. That's exactly 50. The zero aligns with the middle line and that's 50. And now I'm going to take 75 off. So I'm going to count. I place it on 25. And that should be it. And now I'm going to look it. There we go. And now we should be good to start measuring the main bearing. So now let's try the micrometer and see how good that fits. And this fits just perfect as you can see. Okay, so let's check the second bearing. And that fits just fine. Yep, and then the last one. And that's about the same. So we are good. I've checked all three main bearings and they are exactly 49.75 millimeters. So the machine shop did a good job. And now it's time to check the journals uh, for the con rods. Now that is not the same dimension. That is 47.75. So I need to adjust this. All right. 
So let's check those. That's good. And over here, just make sure you don't get in the hole. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. So all are fine. So now I know that my crankshaft is correctly grinded and resized to one step down, 0.25 millimeters. So now that my crankshaft is 0.25 millimeters undersized, I'm going to need bearings that are bigger. Now these are the old bearings and of course they will be too thin. I can't use standard bearings, so I got lucky to be able to order up bearings which are 0.25 millimeter thicker and that's these bearings. These are the main bearings and those bearings are exactly the same. These are, those are for the conrods and they are also 0.25 millimeters thicker than the original one. So you could say that the bearings are oversized, they are bigger and the crankshaft is undersized. Now, before we can fit all these bearings, we got to make sure that the bearings are right because there is something really important that we need to look at because bearings have to have a certain play on the crankshaft. And if you don't have that play, you have a major issue. Let me explain you why. These are the main bearing areas for the crankshaft and already placed one bearing in sight. And what you see is holes. There's a hole there, there's a hole there, and these holes are feed holes with oil, compressed oil, pressurized oil coming from the oil pump. And the idea is that the oil spreads around the bearing so that the crankshaft is rotating in kind of a cushion of oil. It floats in oil. Now, if the gap between the crankshaft and the bearing is too big, too much oil will escape and you will lose the effect of that floating crankshaft in a cushion of oil and you're going to have wear and tear. If the gap is too narrow, then you're going to have another problem. Then you will have the issue about friction and it's going to get warm and the oil cushion will be too thin. Uh, so that's not a good idea. So you need to have the right gap. Now, I don't know what the right gap is on this engine, but what I do know is that the shop told me that the bearings that I got already considered the gap that I should have. So I'm not sure if I can trust them or not, but I think I can. But I will still measure it because I want to make sure. Now, de facto, um, they say that a 0 0.001 inch of gap is allowed per inch of thickness of the axle that sits within the bearing. So we can work that out. And it's on the screen, guys. So now I want to measure that out and make sure that that is correct. So these are the main bearings and you can see it's 0.25 millimeters oversized. And I already have placed one inside a bearing cap. And that's where it is. You just push it in. You got to make sure that everything is absolutely clean. Don't put any oil on the bearing yet. And use a rack which is claw, uh, lint free and here is the cap i'm gonna just put it on there let's see here we go it's got to go in like that and now i'm going to torque it down to the torque that is specified for the engine and in this case that is i think seven kilograms that's one that's two. And that's it. And now we can actually measure the diameter of this bearing. You can measure this in two different ways. You can go and get plastic gauge, which is a piece of plastic that you have to place on the bearing and on the crankshaft itself in a one specific place. Then put the caps on and then torque it down. Don't rotate the crankshaft and that piece of plastic will be squeezed. It will be flat. Then you remove everything and then you measure um, the width of the squeezing of that piece of plastic, uh, of wax, I think it's actually wax. Uh, that's a very easy way of doing it and very cheap as well, but it's not very accurate. 
The other way around is use a Dalbor gauge and this is what that is. And this is very handy and it comes in different sizes. You have an anvil on this side and they come in different sizes, longer ones and shorter ones, so you can measure different diameters. And on the top you actually have a dial. So before you can use this, uh, you will have to calibrate it. Uh, so we're going to do that first of all, let's calibrate it. Now I already put an anvil up of 50 mil, so the maximum measurement is 50 mil because I'm going to measure the main bearing, which is 49.75. So first of all, I'm now going to calibrate this dial to 49.75 millimeters. I clamp my micrometer in a vise very gently with some protective cloth on it. And now I'm going to set it to 49.75 because that is the size of my main bearing on the crankshaft. So let's go first to 50 and I'm going to turn that back 25. There we go. And I'm going to lock it. And now this is my reference and of course we know that this micrometer is correct because we did calibrate it before. Now I'm going to put the, dial, the bore dial gauge inside the micrometer and I'm going to wiggle it until the needle on my dial has the minimum deflection. I think it's about there. And that is my zero point. So now you normally would turn this uh, to set it to zero. Uh, you can dial, turn this dial. But it's a bit hard to show it uh, for you guys like this because I can't see it and I only have two hands. So it's a bit tricky. But I hope you got the idea. So now I know that my dial gauge is adjusted correctly. So let's see if we can measure it. I know when my dial is at zero, I have exactly 49.75 mil. So let's uh, place it in and see how that goes. I'm going to rock it back and forth till I have the minimum reading, so the shortest distance inside the bearing. And that looks like 15 hundreds of a millimeter. We installed one of the bearings and this was the one and then we measured the diameter of the bearing and we know exactly now that we have sufficient play. So now I can go ahead and install all the other bearings and then measure those bearings as well. I don't expect it to be any difference because I started off with this bearing and they're all the same but you better be safe than sorry if you're rebuilding an engine because I don't want to do it twice. So the first thing we're going to do right now is to prepare the crankshaft because I have a few little bolts and nuts to put up and they're a bit tough to get it into the hole. So this is a flange at the end of the crankshaft where the flywheel attaches to and you have these bolts and I already installed two and here you have them and they have to fit through these holes but as you can see it's a real tight fit you can't get them in so you really need to force them in. Now I don't want to hammer too much on this, so one way of doing it is putting these bolts in the fridge. The reason that I'm putting the bolts in the freezer, and here they are, and now they are ice cold, is that metal shrinks when it gets colder, so it will make it easier to put them in. So let me take them out, and they are cold. All right. So I'm gonna put a bit of oil on it, and also on the bolt. So that way I can get it in a bit easier and they are actually quite cold. Let's hammer them in. Little bit by little bit. And that's it. And now we do the remaining ones. And that looks good and it's at the end and locked in. The next one. All right, we are done with this. And now it's time to fit all the main bearings for the crankshaft. We did already one and that's already been inserted, but these are the old ones. Then I have the second uh, main bearing and this is the cap for it. And here you see the old bearing and that's the new oversized bearing. And then we have the last cap, which is all the way at the end. 
it's a bit bigger and we have the old bearings and they look a bit like brass and then we have here the new ones so we're going to fit the new ones into the different parts and when I got it first I was like oops they don't fit but they do fit you have to push it in to fit the main bearing scab I want to make sure that everything is absolutely clean you don't want to have no debris in between the bearing and the block and for that I'm using a cloth or lint-free cloth. I'm spraying a little bit of oil on it so it goes in a bit easier and you can see the hole here that has to fit on that pin and the feed holes of the oil have to align with these holes if not then you have a problem and as you can see it does not fit you would think but you need to push it in it needs to go a little bit more and for that I'm going to use my rubber hammer and tap it gently and now that is in as it should be you can see those two big holes here those are oil feed channels and if you look on the bearing the holes are not in exactly the same position and you might worry about this but there's no need to because on this specific engine there is a oil channel you can see that it's like kind of a cutout between those holes so oil will come out it will flow over this channel and then into these holes and back out this is how that is working on this engine other engines may be different and that's how it is so don't worry if these holes don't line up with these holes as long as you have that oil channel or that groove in here that can carry the oil we have this locking pin there and it takes a bit of effort to put that in especially a big bearing There we go, and it is in place. You don't need to force anything. Now what I'm going to do now is oil these guys. Now I'm going to fit the bearings into the caps. And I want to make sure that everything is absolutely clean. There we go. I'm going to put some oil on it and also make sure that the cap is clean and make sure that the cap is fitted in the right way you see that there's a hole in the top there it has to be on the right side now I know where it's supposed to be because I checked it on the block but you have to make sure if you do something like this that it's in the right place because the channel has to line up with the part that you have already in the block if it's not then you have a problem so um, that's something you need to pay attention to now on this one there is no guiding pin so we can just maneuver it in and then gently tap it in and I mean really gently there we go let's clean it all up and this cap is also ready now let's do the last one so let's put the cap into place and see if everything lines up it's very important if you take an engine apart that you mark all the pieces now here you cannot go wrong because it's a one uh, fit uh, shape but sometimes you can move the cap back or forward and sometimes the caps are just broken off things and then they are lined before so you got to make sure you put them back in the right order the important part that I wanted to show you here is that see that oil channel that must continue all the way between the bearings and that's why you have to pay attention if you put the shells up of the bearing that they are positioned in the right direction because you can actually do this in the wrong direction so 
So now we're going to try to fit the crankshaft. And I have to be very careful. Not to damage anything. The bearings of the push rods are in the right place. So I got this one in. So that looks good. Everything is kind of free now. And now that should be good. So let me put some more oil onto it. So now I'm going to put the caps up and see how it fits. And of course the caps have to go in in the right direction. All right. And now I will bolt them down to the right torque and then see. Now I'm going to lock down the caps on the torque that they're supposed to have and have a check on the crankshaft, how it feels. I haven't connected the conrods yet because it's too early. I still have to check the lateral play of the crankshaft and for that I have to put some shims in in the front. They are not in for the moment, but that's the next step we're going to do. But first of all, I want to see how the crankshaft feels when everything is torqued down. Although we did measure everything, I still like to feel things if everything is all right. So torquing it down to seven kilograms or 70 Newton meters. That's one. That's two. Still feels good. All right. There we go. Everything is on torque and now let's see how easy it still moves and this feels really good. But you can see that there's play. See that? And as you could see, the lateral play is the movement of the crankshaft from the left to the right. And that play has to be reduced and therefore we'll need to adjust it with a set of spacers or washers of a certain thickness. So I'm going to start with a 0.5 mil spacer and then we'll mount it on the front of the motor. And let me show you first of all what these spacers are. Now adjusting the play is with placing washers onto the crankshaft. And this is a 0.5 mil. And these are smaller ones and they're getting real thin. And depending on what you measure, I may have to add or remove them. But I will start with the 0.5 mil because that's the standard uh, wash it. And when I say mill, guys, I mean millimeters, okay? All right, but you need a tool for that. You just can't put it up like that. And that's the tool we're going to use. A dial to measure actually how much the movement of that crankshaft is if we push it back and forth. So we'll need to mount this onto the block and then measure it. So let us assemble everything, but first of all, I'm going to show you where you need to place these washers on this type of a motor. Now, this engine is the same, or the motor is the same as a Traction Avant from a Citroën, so it is the same methodology. This is the actual crankshaft, and you have kind of a recessed area here, and that's where this washer is going. And now we need to put the sprocket up, and then bolt down the pulley, tighten up the nut, and then we can measure the actual uh, play. We may have to adjust the washer if that is necessary. So I'm going to leave this on already and I'm going to mount the following parts. So before we install everything, let's clean everything up so we have no debris on it because that wouldn't be very good. All right. Give it a bit of oil so things are sliding a bit better. First of all, we're going to put up the washer or the spacer. Then we have a bigger locking ring or whatever we want to call it and you got to make sure that the spacer in the back is in the right place then we install the sprocket for the timing chain now I'm not going to put the dandruff in there's a opening here 
for that, but I'm not going to do this. You notice this is a loose pocket, but I'll talk about it later. Now we put this ring up, and then finally we can put the pulley up. There we go. And then we're going to tighten it down. I'm going to lock it down. Just enough, but not too hard. And of course, you need to hold back the crankshaft in the back. And now we can actually start to measure, but first of all, we will install our meter. So now we're going to put the micrometer up and then see what the end result is. Right, there we go. I'm going to move it a little bit forward so the meter has a small indication. I'm going to zeroize the dial. But first of all, I'm now going to pull back the crankshaft to the back. All right, now it's pulled back. I will place the dial on zero. Now I'm going to push the crankshaft forward with the lever. And we're sitting at around 10. So that is 0 0.1 millimeter. And that's within limits or within spec. So, so far we mounted the main bearings, we made sure that the play was right, that the crankshaft can rotate freely. We also checked the lateral play and that we adjusted with some shims or some washers of a certain thickness that's now within limits. And now it's time to install the con rods. And this is the half bearing set that we're going to use for the big ends. See, and at the inside, they look quite clean. On the outside, they look a little bit tacky, but that's all right. And the caps are labeled. See that? I always label my caps. This is a number one facing camshaft. I've done it for all the caps because that's important that you install those correctly. So I'm going to clean up things. I'm going to oil things, and then we'll mount it. So first of all, make sure everything is clean, okay? I already fitted the half bearing on the big end. I'm just going to put some oil up. I like everything to be oiled before I put things together because it's going to take a while and the engine is running before we're going to get oil in all these areas. So, so now I'm going to try to pull that piston up without really damaging anything. There we go, you see that? So that is in, and now I can fit the cap. All right, let's clean that. Let's clean. I'll put a bit of oil on it. And then, I will put the bearing in. Now, the bearing has this kind of dent in it, and that fits in this slot here, right? So, always make sure that you place that in there. Make sure it's a little bit level. All right, and that's it. Let me clean that up. And now we can fit it. Oil it. and fit it. Okay, so a locking tab and the bolt. And I will tighten it gently, not too hard. There's no reason to force it.
I will tighten everything at the end, but not right now. Okay, so um, let's pull the big end up of the cone rods. I just want to put some oil up because I want to have everything nicely greased. It's always the same story, lots of oil. And make sure everything stays clean. And now I'm going to pull up as much as I can that one piston. And there we go. And I'm going to watch out that I don't scratch anything. All right, it's coming up. Okay, here it is. It's not really good to use a paper towel. You should use a lint-free cloth for this. Oil again. And I'm putting the cap up in the right direction. Remember, number two. Here we go. Now it's fully in. Locking tabs up. So I can bend it over so the bolt can never move. I'm not going to lock it down all the way yet, guys. Uh, this is just for now. Okay. Slightly. And at the end, I will put the final torque up. Just want to keep these locks a bit in place. And now we'll do the remaining pistons and then we continue. Okay, so we've got all the con rods connected to the crankshaft in the right positions. We haven't bolted them down to the right torque yet. That's still something we need to do. We'll do that in a few minutes. Then we lock them with those little metal plates and we still have to put locking plates on those main bearings as well. So that's another thing we're going to do. Um, but first of all, I'm going to oil things and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a spin because I'd really like to see how this is working. I already oiled the cylinders, so that should be all right. So let's see if we can get still some proper movement in it before we torque everything down to the final torque. And that seems to be running quite all right. All right. That feels good. So that rotates quite good. So now I'm going to install these locking plates here on the main bearing caps. And then we'll torque everything down. We'll torque down also the con rods, the big ends. We lock them in place. And then finally, we're going to reinstall the counterweights on the crankshaft because I took those off because it's a bit easy to work in. All right, and then we will fix the timing. We install the new sprockets and we can adjust the timing with the camshaft. So let's get on with it. So this took a little bit of bending, but that's okay, it's soft material. And that will secure the bolts. And now let's torque him. And we'll torque him down to 70 Newton meters. But I think I said that already once before. Okay. Double check. And here comes the favorite screwdriver or the famous screwdriver. going to lock that in place.
These are the counterweights that go on the crankshaft. This is number one, two, three, and four. They are numbered. You can actually see that in the front. And even the parts that go with it are numbered. So now it's time to mount those. Um, so this is the first counterweight and we're going to install it on cylinder number one. And you gotta make sure that you install it in exactly the same way as you took it off, like this, yeah. So now let's do number two, but first of all, I'm gonna spin around the engine ones and see if everything is all right. Should be, but you never know. Yeah, that's good. Yep, let's see number one. And now we go back and fit number two in exactly the same way. And also these need to be torqued down to the right torque. All right. And we need to lock them in place with our magic screwdriver. And now it's time to torque down the big ends to 40 newton meter or 4 kilograms. So let's rotate the engine so we can do the remaining con rods. Now with everything, with everything torqued down, I just want to see if everything is still movable and still rotates and that feels good. Nothing hits anything. It's always a good check to do this, making sure that everything is just running smoothly and it is. The timing from the crankshaft to the timeshaft is with sprockets and they are outside the engine block and that's why you have kind of a little oil sprinkler here and that's the one I now need to take out and make sure that this little hole is actually open. We're going to blow it out. I can feel it, so that's good. The synchronization between the crankshaft and the camshaft is provided by a double chain. So we have a small sprocket and a larger sprocket. The large sprocket is sitting on the camshaft and that is twice the dimensions as the small one which is sitting on the crankshaft. And that's normal because of it's a four stroke so you have to do two full rotations of the crankshaft for one rotation of the camshaft. Uh, the funny thing on this engine is that we have no chain tensioner at all. So that's pretty awkward. Um, but that's what it is, and the chain is not running in the block. I think I said that before. Uh, it's running outside the block. So uh, we're going to replace this. Now, I looked on the sprockets, and the teeth are a bit sharp. I, I think they're a bit too sharp, so the sprockets are worn out. The chain is also fairly loose, and you'll see that when we do a little chain test, and it's an easy test. You can check a chain. Um, the point is, if you're going to change the sprocket, you might as well change the chain. That's best practice. Never change one. Always change it as a set. So let's start doing that and then uh, we will actually check for the proper adjustment of the timing because everything has to be properly timed. So let's take that off. I just placed it on to show you guys um, how it fits and we're gonna start looking now at the new parts. You might remember in a previous video when we installed the camshaft that we mounted everything with the old parts and this is the pressure plate and you can see it's a bit worn out. Uh, it's not too bad but at the end I decided to get it replaced uh, with a new type and here it is, this is the new one. I think this is going to be a bit better so let's install that and then uh, we continue with installing the sprockets.
on the right you have a new sprocket and on the left it's the old one and you can see how sharp these teeth are on the old one and that's why I'm going to replace it. So the sprockets are going to be replaced. These are the old ones, these are the new ones. One point, never throw away the old sprockets before you double check the new ones and I'll tell you why in a second. And then the chain. Um, this is the new chain by the way and checking the chain is easy. Just try to squeeze it in and out a bit and feel what kind, how much play you have. Uh, that's an easy test for a chain. This is the older chain and I have a lot more play. It feels a lot more loose as well. So you really, you can feel the wear and tear on that. Um, this one is a lot more stiff. I can just feel that. So um, we're gonna fit new chain and new sprockets. But now, first of all, we need to make sure that the markings on the sprockets for top dot center and for the whole synchronization of the distribution system is still showing up on the new sprockets. And guess what? It does not. On the right, I have the old sprocket, which fits on the crankshaft. And there is a marking there. There's like a little indent and I marked it with white. Now the new one has no marking whatsoever. So I will have to put that mark up on the new one at exactly the same place as the old one. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And I have a similar problem with the sprocket that fits to the camshaft. Old sprocket with the marking, new one without the marking. And to do the correct marking, I'm just gonna place them on top of each other, align them where the dandruff goes in, and then look from the top and identify the exact teeth where I have to put the marking up. Let us align it. And I think this is about right. I'm looking straight through here that the Dandorf slot is exactly the same. And now we should have a proper alignment. We do. And now I can mark the teeth underneath. And I'm gonna mark it with a white pen and then we'll drill a hole. All right, that's my marker. So let's start to prepare this. And first of all, I will put the dandruff in. Then I'm gonna put the tooth wheel up in the right direction. And slide it on. Now for the alignment, the dot has to be in a straight line coming down like this. So I need to rotate that. But before I do so, I will also install this sprocket on the camshaft. There we go. And I'm just going to try to get it all aligned. I know the chain is not on yet, but that's not important right now because it's gotta go all off anyway. But first of all, I need to get these things aligned. Now let's see, so it's a bit more. I have to get them aligned in a straight line, okay? The dots should line up uh, if I run this through the center of both axles. So everything is still aligned. So now let me see if I can get it on while everything is still aligned. And it looks like this is gonna fit. And we do a last check to see if everything is still aligned, and it is. So now we can lock it all up and look at the chain, how more tight it is. It's pretty weird that there's no chain tensioner on this engine, but it is what it is. All right. And then of course the big pulley, but for that, I need another Dandorf, which I don't have for the moment, so I have to order one, but for now, I'm gonna leave it like this. I flipped the engine over and I haven't done all the torquing, but the first thing I would like to do right now is to see if the timing is right. And it's gonna be a very rudimentary test. I've put the two push rods in already and the followers, they're sitting on the camshaft and we'll check on that. The first one here, that is actually your exhaust. This is my intake. And then we'll look at the piston 
we rotate, we look at the marks and see uh, if everything is kind of timed correctly or almost correctly. The piston is now at top that center and you're looking at the followers on the camshaft of the first cylinder. This one is the exhaust valve, that one is the intake valve. If they are recessed or down like they are now, means the valves are closed. So now I'm gonna rotate the crankshaft and see what happens. So now we should have top that center on the piston. We should normally have ignition. Piston should be going down now, and it is, because now we have the labor stroke. And at the end, when the piston is all the way at the end, and now we are at the end, the exhaust valve should open up. And see that how this valve or this follower is now being pushed up. There we go, it's opening up. We come to the top again, top that center, at the end of the exhaust cycle. Now we should have the intake valve, which is the one over here, uh, coming up. And the, and the exhaust valve should be closed. See how that's coming up just nicely. So now we have the intake valve opening up. Piston is going down, sucking in the mixture. Piston is at the bottom dead center. Piston is now coming up and both valves are now closed. And I'm pushing it up all the way to the top and here we are, top dead center and both valves are still closed. So I'm quite happy the synchronization or the timing is as good as it can get. I know the chain was already oiled, uh, but it doesn't hurt to give it a bit of extra. This is really rotating nicely. So miracles are not out of this world. I found the dandorf in my spare parts that just fits right. So now I can put the cover up. And this is the seal that will go on there. Now for the cover, I had to make some washers for that. And these are nylon washers because otherwise I may have some dripping oil coming out of it because this is going to be a bit greasy always. And the manual, or at least the manual I found uh, on the TA said like, you have to put some seal on it, some hermetic they call it, uh, but I'm going to use some nylon washers on that. So, now let's see if we can get this all sorted out and put it on there. All right. And finally, we'll put the front pulley up. Let's see where the dandruff is and get it all aligned. There we go. Let's see how things go and see if we can still rotate the motor and everything should be all right and everything feels just fine. So this is about the last thing we're going to do on this block for this video and this is mounting the oil pump and this is the oil pump and it is important that the oil pump is mounted correctly because this shaft that you see here is also driving the distributor. So we've got to make sure that we mount this uh, correctly. Now the slot that I have right here has to be in line with the block, so parallel to the block. And I have to place the first uh, cylinder to top that center. And then we can actually slide it in. Uh, so I'm going to put that in. I kind of pre-positioned that already. So it's a couple of in and out times uh, to get it right because of this um, pinion here, things will turn when you put it in. But I think this is about right for the moment. So I'm just gonna slide that in. And that feels good. Let me check below. And that is aligned. So I'm just having my finger in the bottom side here where the distributor comes and I can feel that slot being all right. So now uh, I just need to hook everything up and then we should be good to go. And this is the lock and bolt for the uh, oil pump, but I gotta make sure that it's sitting in the right place because there's a cutout in that shaft and I think that's where it is. I can see it. And then I want to lock it with the counter nut. So now let's connect the pipe, which is going to feed the complete block. And to do so, I release these nuts a bit. 
otherwise that is not going to work and it's already a bit difficult to get it in. So this tube right here is actually the output of the oil pump and it's feeding the whole engine so that better be right otherwise um, we may be in deep trouble. And I also need to tighten it up on the block. And now we will lock the pump onto the shaft. And now I should be able to put a cutter pin in. And this is going to be the last thing we're going to do, uh, installing the filter and more specifically the oil filter. And it's a bit awkward because this vehicle doesn't have an external oil filter. It's all built in. And it has mul multiple mazes as you can see. That's one. That's another maze. And each time you have to clean up the oil filter you have to take the carter pan off. Now that's a bit insane, isn't it? But that's the way it is. So. And I think that's why a lot of these old engines um, were not maintained properly because of the fact that it was quite intensive to, to change the oil filter. In fact, you had to take it out and clean it all out. So I'll put a nut in the back. Now some people told me that because of the fact that oil in the old days was different than oil today, there was no need for a very fine oil filter as we have them today. I don't know um, if that's true or not, but maybe you guys can tell me if it's true or not. All right, we're almost there. Gonna lock that up and we've come to the end of this video and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. We did a lot of work on this engine for now. So the bottom side of the engine, the block is as good as ready of old rusty. There's still a bit of work to be done here on the carter. Uh, I need to get the seals for that or the gaskets. Uh, there's another major gasket in the back here that I have laying around, which I will fit as soon as I have the carter gasket because it goes together when you mount it. And then uh, we will install the cylinder head and the cylinder head is actually in the machine shop and ready. They called me, but I can't pick it up because of COVID. So anyway, uh, please put your comments up because I always like your comments, believe me or not. And I read them all. I may not always agree, but that's just the way it is. And I hope uh, you all stay safe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.